Gary asked me if I preferred to be introduced as a comedian or a humorist, and I said that is really up to you guys, because if I get a lot of laughs this morning, I'm a comedian. If I get a few laughs, I'm a humorist. And if I get no laughs, well, that makes me a former engineer. <laughs> In prepping for today, I, I've thought long and hard about what makes a dynamite speech to a 8.30 a.m. meeting of instructional technologists. <laughs> and I think it boils down to three things. One, be funny, if possible. Two, slip in a message here and there. And three, be sure that any nudity is tasteful and integral to the plot. <laughs> Turns out that pismo means tar in the language of the native Chumash Indians. And I guess that Pismo Beach sounded better than Tar Beach. Right? You know, a lot of things sound better in foreign languages than in English. Isn't that true? Like, I, I came to that conclusion the night I was in Boca Raton enjoying vermicelli puttanesca, and, and I realized that I was actually in a rat's mouth eating little worms with horse sauce. And it didn't sound quite so good. Now that is exceptional horse sauce. I must get the recipe. You guys get great phone. <laughs> you know how to use a phone. <laughs> how do you answer a call? Everyone wants to answer an emergency, right? Something like that. Everybody should be required to answer their phones as succinctly as a dispatcher. You know? Nowadays you call a hotel and you get, Good morning and thank you very much for calling the award winning Excelsior Hotel. We're serving the customers always your number one priority. At Excelsior, we put you first because we know your time is precious. My name is Greg, I'll be your customer service representative. Help me help you, sir, on that. I'm so amazed the police have to read criminals their Miranda rights. You know, is there anyone left in this country that can't recite that you have the right to remain silent speech by memory? Can't the police just go, alright, you're under arrest. By the way, you ever watch Law and Order? Yeah. <laughs> Great, just saving a lot of time. Get in the car. <laughs> How about uh, America's Most Wanted? So I thought about that show the other day. Uh, my car was in the repair shop, and I had to take the bus in Los Angeles. <laughs> that was an adventure. I felt like on the BMW was in. I found them. Yeah, I found them all. <laughs> One thing I love, love, love about your profession are the, the crazy stories, the, the bizarre calls that you get. You know, the humor books on the subject, they crack me up. It's, it's impossible to pick a favorite, but, but one that you know, this was so great. The winner of the Darwin Award, as you could say, is the guy who called 911 threatening to commit suicide in a pretty unusual manner. He swallowed a bunch of nitroglycerin pills, prescribed for his mother's heart condition, and threatened to slam himself up against the wall, figuring he would explode. Where did he get this plan? Why did Coyote? Which reminds me, why did Coyote have enough money for all that acne crap? Why didn't he just buy himself dinner? <laughs> It's widely believed that on college campuses, the best looking people on the college staff work in the student loan department. Yeah, student loan officers and administrators. People hired not only for their number crunching skills, but for their stunning good looks. Why? Well, according to the rumor, you student loan hotties are used to mesmerize students so they never question the outrageous debt they're incurring. <laughs> it's a brilliant yet devious plan. There's one problem, though. You know, the students may be blinded by your hotness, but their parents probably aren't. They're always going to grumble about how expensive college is. And, you know, I say, just tell them it's not expensive, relatively speaking. I mean, you know, not compared to roast leg of Bigfoot, grilled over moon rocks, served with Dom Perignon and Holy Grail, you know, things like that. If that doesn't get the parents off your back, just blame the price of college on the Fed. Nobody really understands what they do anyway. I'm already planning ahead for my children. I don't have any kids yet, but already I'm saving for the college education. I set up one of those 529 accounts, and every year I'm going to add to it as much as I can, and then when my children are ready to enter college, I'll just go out and rob a bank. <laughs> so I'm all set. 
I'll, I'll tell you one thing, though. It's not going to be like the day that uh, I left home for college. My parents put me on the Greyhound bus bound for Boston, and I still remember my dad fighting back a tear, turning to my mom and saying, put it this way, Evelyn. We're not losing a son. We're losing our life savings. <laughs> And how could I forget them sitting in the audience when I graduated five years later? It was so touching to see them sitting there, listening intently to the commencement speech, futilely trying to get something for their money. <laughs> I contributed what I could financially. I, I worked a few part-time jobs uh, to help pay tuition. One thing I did was sell encyclopedias, which was great. Um, until the librarian found out. <laughs> and she was pissed. I also played football at MIT, not exactly an athletic powerhouse. Uh, we were a Division 84 team. <laughs> played some Canadian junior high schools. Yeah, we did okay. We came in 90th place. But we loved to talk trash to our opponents, you know? We had these chants that were really obscure. We'd, we'd go, E to the U, D, U, D, X, E to the X, D, X, cosine, hypotenuse, tangent, sine, pi is 3.14159, radical, integral, U, D, V, geometry, calculus, MIT. We're not rough. We're not tough but we do know quite a bit of math. <laughs>